Good morning, everybody. It is, today is the 10th of Elul, which is the yard site of Rav Pinchas Karitzer. I remember when I was a Bachar, I was a Chosin, actually, went to Uman, Rosh Hashanah, it was 2006, and, uh, and on the way back from Uman, at Erev Rosh Hashanah, we went to to uh, Mezhbush and, and Bardichev, who were by the Baal Shem and the other tzaddikim that were in Mezhbush, and, and the, and the, uh, the Dago, and, 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 and the, the other tzaddikim that are buried there in Mezhbush. And we were also in Bardichev, and there's a whole story about the Bardichevers kever that came out last year. Um, so uh, then uh, we're in Uman Rosh Hashanah, and then on the way back, we went to Polnoy, went to Shvetivka. And in Shvetivka is buried the Ripilchus Karatsu. And I, from all the tzaddikim that we visited, the, that we made the pilgrimage to their, to their tombs, I felt something by Reb Pinchas Karatzer. I, I I don't think I ever felt before uh, by any. Even though you always feel something, you go to Kivert Sadikim, you feel the energy. By Reb Pinchas Karatzer, I felt something out of this world, and I, I don't think I felt anything similar until I was later when I, with my wife. We were by, and my wife felt the same thing. We were by my holy Zeta, the Maharal Prague, when we were in Prague something similar felt there, although that was, I think, even more otherworldly to be there by, by the Holy Zeta, by the Maral. And in a sense, for Pinchas cards, there's a shtickel a Zeta to my wife. Why? My wife's a Gioris. So, so I, I was wondering, what's that best by Pinchas cards, or, you know, I, I learned Kedushas Levi so much, should have felt by the Bardichever, and I found out later that my ancestors had some sheiches to the Bardichever, uh, the, the, the the my my holy Zayda the the Kruva Rav had, had some kind of a shaykhis and, and uh, certainly the Rebbitzin and, and the children, one of his sons, a uh, brother-in-law to to, to to my elder Zayda, brother to my elder elder Baba, the Changer Rav Changer Rebbitzin's brother was 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 Changer Rebbe and he was a, a chos of the Berdichever. Uh, the Changer Rebbe before before the Menuchas Asher of Yerus Ben Yamin. Ostreicher was, was uh, a great great uncle, and uh, I think also Shtiklizeda somewhere along the line. I don't remember, but so I had such a shaykhus to to the Berdichever, and I said, and always was learning from Shlomo Levi, and such a shaykhus to to Rabbi Nachman, to everything. Was epis by Pinchas Karitzer that I felt this big service and this big inspiration. And so anyway, my, my wife is a Gioris on the Besdin was Rabbi Shapiro Zechor Lebrocha was uh, Ben Acher Ben from Rapinchus Karitzer so, uh, so without Rapinchus Karitzer I wouldn't have my wife, right? Because one of the three Dayanim on the Besdin was, was his father uh, was called the, the Karitzer Rebbe and he could have called himself Karitzer Rebbe if he wanted and uh, so that's the that that's the one shaykhis. And then my second daughter, her birthday say she's become bas mitzvah today. Hard to believe. Already have two two children who are two two of my daughters are benos mitzvah already. How the time flies. And for Hashem, and I know her. And and so uh, my second daughter, her her. Uh, Her birthdays today on, on Yud, Yud El, the yard side of Rapinchus cards. But I also had a little thing that I had a connection to Rapinchus cards. We learn as far as when we have something, a story, something, or Rapinchus cards, so we have a special devotion to Rapinchus cards. But uh, the uh, there's one thing I, I dive in for years now. Since a, I was a bacher, from the sitter that, that told us Avram Yitzchok 
Pinchas Eden put out. And I like this sitter because it has a lot of the Inyanim al Pi Kabbalah, but not too much. Uh, you know, so you have some Sidurim, it, it's more commentary than the sitter, and it, you're going to turn pages forever, you know? So, which it's nice, you want to learn, you learn a sitter like that. To the Daven from, you need a sitter, but I want some Kabbalistic Kavanas and things and, and other Bakashas and Tachinas and things that. And this is something my neshama pulled me to, and then later on I find the Enoch from the Chavos Yor, and so many of these things, the Chavos Yor himself writes about and encourages a lot of these things you don't find in other Sidurim. Uh, before the time of the Baal Shem Tov it shows that what um, I forgot the name. There's a historian in England. He was a stickler rabbi. I don't remember his name now. He he said that really. The modern Hasidic movement started from the Maral Mi Prague. You know, it, it got expanded really by from the Baal Shem Tov and from the from the Magid. But it was really uh, the idea to be a Chassid like that came from Maral Mi Prague, my Zayda, my Holy Zayda, and of course the, the Chavas Yor was the Enikel from Maral, and he was very much devoted to that approach. Uh, in Germany in those days in the 1600s well, uh, you know a generation or two before the Baal Shem Tov but anyway, Repinchus Karitzer was a, a Talmud of the Baal Shem Tov and the Siddur that I, I like to use when, when most most days at least for Shachris, whatever is this from Tol Tzavar Mitzchak uh, which is a Hasidic community in Shalayim that I used to I used to go to Tish every week when I was a Bacher when, in, in Liverpool learning in Yushalayim, and Darton in the, in, in, in the, in the Siddur, right after Moida Ani, it brings that Repilchus Koritzer taught his students that every day they should say the following, of course they have to say our whole liturgy, that's what we're talking about, something brief they could say every day or even more than once a day. With, uh, is a very simple prayer. Let's six words. Rabbi Shalom, master of the universe. God. You know, Rabbi Nachman always said that that should be used kind of how in the East they have mantras. We, we know that uh, Rabbi Nachman said that you, you, you want epis like a mantra. I don't know what you would say in, in Lashon Kodesh to describe such a thing, just a, a term that you you repeat over and over again. Bali Musar had the same approach. When you want to get into a mindset for his this is to say Boynish Loilam. You can repeat it over and over again. Boynish Loilam, Boynish Loilam, Master of the Universe. That's Rabbi Nachman taught. So, but but uh, so so but Rapinchas cards are. He said that he told his Talmidim they should say the following prayer Master of the Universe, guide me in the path of truth. Necheni, maybe it's not exactly guide, it's almost like, again, I don't mean to use these Eastern terms because it's a, it's a different religion, it's not ours, but. Sometimes the descriptions are better expressed, just like there's certain things you can only really express in Yiddish. And you try to say it <coughs> in English, it doesn't come out. And the other, the other way, too, sometimes the concepts that come out of the Eastern religious traditions um, are apt. And I know Rabbi Bart Sadok, it all goes inside, he, he uses this. So, like, Necheni means to kind of allow me to follow the path of truth. It's, it, it's, it's, in a sense, it's, it's almost like, I, again, I don't want to use from other religions, but like the, the idea of the Tao being the way, being, and, and that it's a path of least resistance. So for, for ends, even for us, the Jewish people, the Jewish religion, our community, our religious community, we seek that God should allow us to follow graciously, allow us to follow the path of truth. 
And that's why the Pilchus Koritzer encouraged his Talmidim, his disciples, that they should pray that God should allow them and allow, and we should pray, we should be also students for Pilchus Koritzer of all the Tzadikim. Today is his yard site, so, so that's how we, we go. If we can't be in Shemitifka today, maybe there are people who are in Shemitifka today. But those of us who are not physically in Shemitifka, we know that another Talmud of the Baal Shem Tov was was the Maranayim, the Chernobyler. He writes that if you learn the Torah from the Tzaddik, it's the same Indian as making a pilgrimage to the Kever. And and actually, the Satmarov says that if you make the physical pilgrimage, but you don't make that that spiritual pilgrimage of learning their Torah, it, it doesn't really count very much, according to Satmarov. Meaning, it's nice to make the you know the, the motions of going to Kever. Well, Satmarov was not a big fan of, of going to Kvarim. There are very few Kvarim that he really um, made an Indian to go to. One was Rabbi Zakaliver, and, and you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chosid of, of Kaliver Rebbe Shlita, people know. And that's my Rebbe. I'm not going to say I'm a Kaliver chosid necessarily, but I'm a chosid of Kaliver Rebbe. That's the way I express it. And then uh, I try to be. I, I know I don't live up to it. Calvary Rebbe's my wish inside a Kador. The Calvary Rebbe in Williamsburg. Um, and and, and it, we, we published this book that I translated. You can get on, on all the websites. Uh, only with Amuna. But anyway. The, uh, and we, we give out the the break tour every week you could sign up for free the emails go to the website you can sign up for the emails both in Hebrew uh, weekly and uh, which is much more Hebrew and a little bit Yiddish and the English once a week I don't know if we're going to have time tomorrow because we're going away on vacation uh, maybe, maybe the, the Rebbe Zainical he said maybe he'll send today we'll try but anyway What's the point when I'm saying this? Oh, you, you learn the Torah from Tzaddik. It's the same Indian like you going to his kever. And, 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 and even if you go to the kever and you don't... Well, that's why I said because Satmarov would go to Rabbi Zakaliver. I think he'd go to the Sons of Rav, And he went to Maron. And that's about it. He, even in America, he told people, you, you're looking for where to go. He said, you go to Rav Koilo heard such a thing and I when I was hit by the Rav Koil a few weeks ago uh, interesting over, it was over there by the Rav Koil also I was by Rabbi Shapiro it was by by the rabbi who made my wife was on the Besden together with with Rabbi Steinberg uh, Rabbi Steinberg uh, we um, We went like this. So that's a shot. Anyway, we, when we learn the turf from Tzaddik, that's really the, the bigger Indian than actually going and visiting. Uh, and so this this Shtikl Torah, there are a lot of Torahs from Pinchas Karas, or as you say from Medrash Pinchas, that's collection of his of his teachings um, I remember one thing it's brought from Pinchas Karitz there's an Indian it's raining now but it's not Sphira during Sphira between Passover and Pentecost between Pesach and Shavuot the rain it has a healing quality a lot of other teachings like that that Pinchas Karitz are brought down from the Swarma Kedusha anyway I have to learn that's a teaching that I have to share from you share with you from a Pinchas Koritz or today in this yard site is that he taught his students to pray to God to that God should uh, graciously allow them, guide them to the stickle of both 
it's, it's somewhere between guiding and allowing, and it's really the same thing. If you really understand what that means, but there are chemas in the way of truth. I, I'll tell you a story about that before we finish. I remember there was a Rachman Lutzlan, and a lot of people, you know, pick on Usher Meza, and because he says things that which are the Ikra Din, even though it's really what we would call halacha ve'en marinke, right? That there are certain things that is the law, but the Gemara says sometimes you don't tell everybody what the law is, right? Because people can easily become confused, and anyway, we, not only we don't, we don't teach like that, but we don't follow like that. Just because you're allowed to do something doesn't mean you should do it. So there's this idea of halacha ve'en marinke, and and Rabbi Asher Zolgazunzayin, his derech is Marin Kane. <laughs> if it's the halacha, he teaches it. Even a filly main Marin Kane, even if we don't go like that, he teaches it so people should know. And but but he he also says, uh, if you really look at what he says, he says he, he shouldn't do it. But this is the halacha, you know, because there's such a thing of being part of the community, and you're not supposed to be parshman and siver. So he doesn't teach to be parishment He teaches that this is a halacha, but but we, you have to be part of the seaboard. So so we don't. So we we might be more strict in this area, or that area, right? And <clears throat> so one of these things that people know that he talks about is that what do you do? You have somebody, and Ralph Drawer is saying the same, the similar thing. In the video we talked about yesterday. You have some uh, Rav Jor is talking about non-Jews, but uh, but uh, Rav Asher is also really talking about non-Jews, but they want to become Gayrim or whatever it is, or or Jews or whatever it is. In this case was a Jewish person. What is the halacha if you have somebody, right, who believes does not believe that a certain false Messiah is God? They don't worship him. They don't pray to him, but they believe that he's the Messiah, or they believe he's a Tana, or whatever it is. What's the halacha there? They're wrong. They're wrong, and Rabbi Asher says openly they're wrong. And we all and, and some of my rabbim they talk about this. They're wrong, but it's not an apikaris. If they believe now, Rabbi Asher he he he, he clars and tainas that maybe it's also. Uh, you go a little further, and some of the Lubavitchers also go a little further, in the same way, Atzimus Begoof, and this and that, that that's, uh, maybe it's also not necessarily uh, Avodizara, or, or Kvira, I, I clear differently with that, but, but but to say that someone's Mashiach, we're going now to Baltimore, Mir Hashem, and of Baltimore Rosh Hashiva, he, he has a whole famous tshuva about that, that the Lubavitchers, that he says the ones that believe that the Bereno Nicks, the Elokistin, those are, are, they're, 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 you know, they don't come from me, they're not Parakali, so, but the ones who, who think he's a Mashiach, they're wrong and they're stupid, but they're not Epikarsim, they can count for a minion, they're Shechitas Kosher, their wine is kosher, etc., etc. That that's what Rabbi Feldman's Lucas Unsign, bigger Shiva of Aaron Feldman, uh, one of the Gedolei Ador. That that was his psak. The thing is, so if you're intellectually honest, if that's true about Lubavitcher Rebbe, it's about it. It's true about really any any false Messiah, even one who's a big Russia, even one of. I remember when I went. I spent one Shabbos in Far Chabad. And they were saying, they said they all believe Lubavitch Rebbe's Mashiach. But they, they said, you don't have to believe Lubavitch Rebbe's Mashiach. You want to believe the Ben Yishchai's Mashiach, you can believe that. But they said, the Gemara says Mashiach come from the dead. It's not really posh at the way that they're learning it. And it's really wrong. And it's really, and the thing is, is like Rav Aaron Feldman points out, he says, if, if Hashem's already going to do a miracle of bringing Mashiach from the dead, so it would be Dabba the Melech of Moshe Rabbeinu. Why should it be somebody the 1990s, you know, so, um, so that's really the answer there with that, but anyway, uh, 
So, but I remember, so they said, what about Oiseish? They said, well, Oiseish was a Russian. Uh, that, you know who? He, he was a wicked person. And so, therefore, that's why he's not Mashiach. Not because, not because the idea of Mashiach coming from the dead is a foreign idea, but because that particular person was, was an evil person. Um, the thing is, again, so this is what we believe. We believe he's an evil person. But there are billions of people who think he was the greatest guy who ever lived, right? And more than that, right? So, so even if they're wrong, or, you know, does that make it a heresy? You know, that's, that's the issue here. Um, you know, two billion people, three, maybe three billion people. I don't know. They, they believe he was the greatest person ever, right? A Yiddish kid, if you imagine such a thing. So, um, and they think more than that, right? We know what they think. So, so again, so, so, so anyway, Rabbi Asher, he, he talks about people who want to keep halacha. They believe in, in, in you know, following the halacha, Kedivrei Chazal, but they have this stupid, idiotic, ridiculous belief, the Oiseish, right? So, um, what do we do with these people? Are, are they apikarsim? Are they, how, and essentially, he says we treat them the same like we we, we treat the messianic Lubavitchers, right? That they're still really part of Kali Israel, and, and, and then and then the question is, are you going to be guy or someone? I remember I was sitting with like some conservative rabbis when I was the Rav in Richmond, and, and this question came up in Israel that there was there was some. Uh, uh, in Israel, I think it was a Russian kid who wanted to be a ger, but he believed Lubavitch Rebbe was Mashiach and the, and the best and didn't know what to do with it. Should they be Makavalim? Should they not be Makavalim? So I remember the conservative rabbi, you know, who, who, who was taking people who were like openly Mechal Shabbos or whatever it is. You know, I didn't understand the halachas at that time of how that actually works. Uh, he said he wouldn't he, he wouldn't be Makavalim a ger. This is a guy who's probably been Makavalim thousands of Gerim, he wouldn't be Makabal Ger who believes that that uh, is Mashiach. Okay. <laughs> he's a Mandamar, right? He's, a, he's an older person. He's a respectable person. Shemar uh, Termitzvah, he learned in JTS, and he was a rabbi in conservative shul, you know. So, not an Apikoros, a guy who follows Shulchan Aruch, you know, he knows Shulchan Aruch, knows Gemara, you know, Summer Shabbos. Anyway, uh, Shabbos, Kashrus, Taras, Mishmocha, everything. Anyway, I remember I was in his house once and he had a nice Shulchan Aruch there, you know, whatever. So, anyway, uh, so this is El Bazach. You have to ask yourself. So, if, if you good, it, it, you have to be consistent. If if you're not going to be Makabal Aguer who believes Lubavitch Travis Mashiach, you're also not going to be Makabal Aguer who wants to follow all the halachas with, and, and, and doesn't worship Oisish, but thinks he's a, he's a Mashiach, right? And if, you, and if, so if you're not going to be Makabal, you're not going to be Makabal. If you are going to be Makabal, to a certain extent it makes sense to be Makabal the other way, but maybe yes, maybe no. And that's the... Uh, 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 and again, but Meikir Adin, you know, it's such a year chal, that's really the question. And the answer is yes, Mestama, because it's not happy courses, it's not Chutz Midobar Echon, it's not, you know... It's not over one of the Yugimalikrim. It's just it's just a shtus without being apikorsis. Anyway, it's it's something that's stupid, but it's not necessarily heretical. But it's stupid and it's wrong and it, and it should be avoided. And, and maybe there's a danger that it could lead to heresy because of the connections to heresy like that. And that would probably be the reason why it's wise not to be macabre such a gear, not to accept such a convert. Anyway, so again. In general, when when my friend Reb Asher, he talks about these things, usually, he generally he's talking theoretically and not necessarily uh, practically. There's there's such a thing halacha that's ikar din and halacha lamaisa, but sometimes the ikar din is the lamaisa, you know. And we could talk about that another time. The reason I'm telling the story is it's connected to this. So Reb Asher, I remember he he pointed me to this guy might be watching the video now. And I don't mean to embarrass him, but it's a, it's a beautiful story. So, pointed me to Ayid, born Jewish, mother is Jewish, I think both his parents were Jewish. Um, 
we be, it, it, you know, nowadays you go online, you can learn everything by yourself. But epis felta, you know, the truth is, you're only going to really be integrated into a community by really living in a community. Ideally, uh, a, a, a boy, a man, should learn yeshiva or koil or something to really be integrated into the community. And a woman should even probably go do some kind of seminary or something. Uh, they have, that's what they call the girls' schools, you know, after a certain age. But, or at least, you know, if, if, if you know, that that's the the way that that, that goes. So, uh, but, but nowadays with the internet, people, they, they just learn everything online, and you can still kind of tell somebody who really never was part of the community, uh, you know, and, 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 but anyway, you have someone, he's born Jewish, and, he, and this is what happens, and then everyone, he learns online, but then also, he gets confused, because he doesn't have any hadrocha, right? He doesn't have any guidance, he doesn't have any, right? So there was a guy, I'm not going to give any other identifiers, but he would, this was when I was first rub in Richmond, the guy didn't live in Richmond, he lived far away from Richmond, somewhere else in the United States. I spoke to him recently online. I hadn't spoken to him in over 10 years, whatever. 